Hamid there. Coming up and coming through for you this very lovely East Toothpaste. Uh, loving somebody and somebody loving you back. Okay, well, we hope you had a good weekend with a very, very lovely touch. Uh, touch from different people, touch from everybody who cares possibly about you. Uh, the way in touch, the way in contact, and yes, they make your day or make your weekend really interesting and happy. Had an interesting weekend. Yes, uh, I will tell you. Um, plan was. Okay, let me give you a little bit just about my weekend. So, I started off the weekend with the idea that, uh, well, I'm not driving, just gonna stay at home, relax, you know, much protocol to follow through. I'm just gonna let the car rest, kind of. So, that moment where my sibling comes around and says, oh, family, um, bring your car, let me warm it for you. And I'm like, hmm, warm it for me. Mischievous look on my face, wondering, why do you suddenly want to warm my car for me on a Saturday morning? Thinking that, oh, maybe you had some runs you wanted to do. Just wanted to be kind to me in advance, ahead of, um, you know, ahead of later in the day when you will actually not ask for the main favor. Eventually, I succumb. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and warm the car. And it gets there and says, it's not starting. You know? And I go back and I say, how can you say it's not starting? There's no security. The security is not like that, that, that protocol. And going on and on and on. And then I tried and I go, and I turn the key, and I don't know, maybe it's the wrong key. Turn it around, maybe it's the wrong key. Only for me to realize that the trend that has been going on in Abuja has finally, I finally fell for it. Yes, I'm serious. Well, they took out my battery this weekend. Yeah, and the battery was out completely from the vehicle. And I mysteriously looked at the car and I said, and you can't shout. You know, and I was wondering what what was supposed to use to shout, but sadly they took out my battery this weekend. And you know, once something happens to you, then people come up with consolation stories. Uh, the consolation stories ah, hmm, it's not only you. It has always been like that with different people at different times. So I started hearing stories about how six shops were burgled, about how cars uh, somebody released it. A guy was arrested and uh, the police recorded or somebody recorded how he was being interrogated by the police on how he steals batteries and then the video of it went live uh, on facebook and people have been watching that extensively so it brings up the idea of okay so why are you punishing the guy for what he did wrong he was also showing the skills to i want to be thief okay somebody who wants to steal learned how to do that and the mechanic I called eventually to come come around, show me how this guy did this. He said, oh, for all on the cast, the cables pass just the way on down on the... Okay, let me not be too descriptive so that I don't give other ideas and nobody comes back for my new battery again. But essentially, um, that was how my weekend did go. And I had a good laugh and I had not a good laugh physically, but not my bank account was not laughing at the end of the day because I had to buy a new battery in order to get here this morning. Morning to you, Africa. Welcome to the show. It's time to review some of the stories. I'm Femi D and I'll be with you for the next few minutes to let you in on some of the stories that are leading the way this very lovely morning in Africa. As always, we like to start off from Nigeria and we'll go through some of the papers in Nigeria and also let you in on what all the stories uh, are going on in Africa and possibly around the world. All right then, let's start off with uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission. Um, the leadership newspaper is reporting this. They say INEC registers 3,500 voters in Kuje Area Council. Well, the discussed site has so far registered 3,500 voters in the first quarter of voters registration exercise in the area. Well, speaking at the completion of the first quarter of the exercise in Kujia the weekend, the electoral office of the council, Zena Bevi, said that the names of the registered voters in the area would be displayed in this week's identification, verification, and correction before cards are printed. Well, that's one story uh, that uh, pretty much puts INEC on the radar. Many of us remember that INEC has been talking about extensively new voters need to be out there uh, to be part of the notable election if they're going to get the chance, uh, by any means at all, to vote in the 2019 elections, which are due to come up soon enough, and um, it's faster than you think uh, in this regard. All right, so that's part of the story from the weekend um, in Lagos, precisely, where voter registration did go on, and INEC uh, had a good time having that uh, pull through 
for them. You can read about it. It's on our Twitter handle, Anik Nigeria Story. And yes, I'm sure you find it interesting. And then also, um, looking at another story from this morning. Okay, so Anik is still going on about the continuous voter registration and now people should follow through. Uh, they did a consortium for several civil society organizations, Amelia Pali, uh, to follow through. And they talked to a large extent about what needs to be done. Now, away from Anik, let's play around with the customs now. Well, over the weekend, the customs said its operation unit in Zone A uh, in Ikeja, um, part of Lagos, they did confirm that they intercepted imported, used, and new vehicles smuggled into the country through the porous land borders. Well, they say the value generated in the last six months for them uh, in 2017 is as much as 3 billion naira. Now, in a press statement released just yesterday uh, by the Public Relations Office of the Command, uh, Jerry Atta, it said the 22 vehicles are worth over 109 million naira and were intercepted around, along uh, the southwestern part of the country. And he also discussed that the revenue generated from the good diverted duty payment at the national seaport and land borders and airports from January to June 2017 makes a lot of difference. So, well, that's one part of it uh, to a large extent uh, that one would say custom intercepts market vehicles generate. 3 billion in six months. I like the part where they give account of how much they made, uh, and well, you start to wonder as much as they make money if it really translates into uh, the inflow of the country in that regard. It's time to say good morning to UK. UK, good morning. Good morning, Femi. Good morning, uh, Nigeria, Africa, the rest of the world. Apologies for coming late. Ah, and we like the African touch you decided to share with yeah, us. Yeah, uh, maybe that's why I decided to. And it's it. soft like the inside of the pumpkin. Ah ah, like Femi. watermelon. <laughs> I'm gonna take that um, as a compliment and I always see. compliment you. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. I had the battery stolen. I had to buy oh, clear my car to buy. That's oh. the summary of it in one sentence. I love your jacket as well. Oh, Is that something you. that you got somewhere around Africa, Ethiopia, maybe? Not necessarily. I just I, okay. Here was this guy over the weekend at the point where you no, know, I wasn't driving. Battery out, so I had to go around. Then I. So I go to the market in in place of buying the battery, and I see this guy selling jackets. Um, mm. He had the, of course, the foreign jackets, the the one where you have the British and the American guys wear, and then he had the African one. Now I must tell you, confess, this this is a little bit bigger than I am, so I'm just going to pretend as if I'm talking it down the line, so that I don't <laughs> actually see the size. But I really enjoyed the color display. This is the type of jacket you can wear, and will blend in anywhere, coat anywhere of, for coat anybody. Coat of many colors. Coat of, yes, this is my own Joseph moment. <laughs> coat of many colors. It's just that my daddy didn't buy this for me. But I really like it because uh, some would say, oh yes, it has a lot of colors. It also means it's a lifesaver. Any trouser and white or black would do, um, so long as you don't come off as a rainbow, you should do fine wearing this. And by the way, uh, it's been described as a Nigerian, I think it belongs to the, uh, the Northern tribe. They also try and, the knitting, um, etc. Oh, really? Mm. Quite smooth too. It's something one should uh, really think about exporting. Is it the Minister of Agriculture who is responsible for exporting things like this now? Um, I think it should be trade and investment. Oh, trade and investment. Okay, uh, not exactly tra um, trading. It's just been much talk about contractual papers. It's not exactly trading in terms of anything being done anyway. Uh, but, but at the same time, um, culture and tourism as well. Take a look. I'm wearing a Nigerian jacket for all those who say made in Nigeria is one kind, one kind. This is yeah. the one kind, one kind on me right now, and it looks good, and I look better than brown. I must say, with all pride. <laughs> what do pride do to you? Okay. Well, let's stay up and stay on point. That there's much to cover. Yes, Nigeria needs to be promoted, and well, what we've been doing is looking through a little bit of the stories from the weekend and how well different people have taken out different level of the protocol essentially to keep Nigeria going. And yes, this weekend was not an exception as well. Yeah. CBN also did make a statement. Uh, well, through the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emifili, he has said the Apex Bank will continue to review its policies to ensure the best is achieved for the country's economy. Uh, Emifili was in Unsuka over the weekend and was delivering a lecture tied to the dilemma of monetary policy and exchange rate management in a recession. 
potential options for Nigeria. Yes, it's all one sentence, and that's the title of just one paper, not the whole paper, just the title. Uh, the potential options for Nigeria. It talked about CBN will continue to monitor evolving situations and constantly review its policies to ensure the best of, for the economy. And he also said that they will do their best to justify the importation of items like apple, cucumba, eggs from South Africa, beef from Zambia, toothpicks from China. Uh, these are the items that he believes are taking much of the funds of Nigeria in this regard. Big story coming up from UK in any moment from uh, now. Of course, um, Nigerians, if you are anywhere on social media or if you have been following the news, mm. you would notice that um, a picture popped up um, over the weekend just yesterday, Sunday, of President Muhammadu Buhari meeting with governors and leaders of the All Progressives Congress in London. Now, in a statement issued by the special advisor to the president, Femi Adeshino, the Imo State Governor Rocha Sukoracha said the president was very cheerful and has, has not lost any bit of his sense of humor. Okoracha, who is also the chairman of the APC Governors Forum, added that the party delegation spent more than one hour with President Buhari over lunch. And I'm looking at this picture, looking at the picture of um, a president, if indeed um, this is um, a what recent it is, picture. if it is a recent picture, but I'm looking at a president who looks frail, mm. obviously. Um, someone who's recuperating, mm. but I find this very insulting, Femi. Okay. Insulting on the sensibilities of Nigerians and um, the penchant of the ruling class to take Nigerians for granted. The president is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, he swore an oath on the 29th of May 2015 to um, put every Nigerian interest first, mm. to protect lives and properties of Nigerians, and to be accountable to Nigerian people. For more than 70 days now, Nigerians don't know the state of affairs of the president, yeah. whose salary, uh, you know, uh, we pay. And we don't know whether he's alive, we don't know whether he's dead, we're told he was alive. Thank God there's a picture showing that he's alive. Uh, sometime uh, last two months, the, the um, executive, uh, the, the um, ruling party, the APC or the presidency, pulled off something that was a stunt. We, mm. we had this um, recorded audio of the president addressing the nation in in Hausa. Now, as though that was not bad enough, we have a president who is fit enough to sit down with the APC Governors Forum, mm. who is fit enough to hold at least an hour discussion and eating and enjoyment with these people, but he's not fit enough to address the nation. And I find that very, very insulting. It's not exactly insulting. It's, it's, uh, it's, if not, um, disregard uh, for morality, for uh, conscience, and for any other terminology you may want to, uh, well, one may subscribe to come up with in a whole sense of it. Now, let me even mention something. Now, there's another part of that story that uh, almost extensively of what Rochas Okorocha said. Of course, he was up last week trending to an, to an extent when he said Nigeria doesn't need restructuring but repackaging. Uh, he did go on to say, President Muhammadu Buhari yesterday laughed at lies on his state of health. Uh, that's according to Rochester Okorocha. Okorocha was a look, did travel to London alongside with the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechim, uh, Governor Umaru Tango Amakura of Nasarawa State, Nasriyaru of Kaduna State, Yaya Bilu of Kogi State. Why is Paishin not on the list? I'm just wondering. Well, I think President Yemi Oshibajo told the nation that the president is recuperating fast after visiting him on the 11th of July. Now, Femi Adishina, the presidential spokesman, did have news to go on yesterday night. And he said in a telephone conversation following the meeting with the All Progressive Congress governors and leaders, uh, the President Mohamed Buhari in London Sunday um, was cheerful and has not lost any bit of sense of humor. Uh, the governor said, but here, here, okay, forgive me, let me interrupt myself, um, something I don't do often, but hold on for a moment. What do we need to evaluate? A sense of humor or his strong sense of leadership. I mean, at this point, looking at all of the issues that Nigeria is facing with, we're facing, um, is faced with rather, we're facing um, security challenges. Just this morning, the news filtered in that IDP camps have been bombed, mm. you know, somewhere um, in um, 
a bonus uh, IDP comes. A bonus state, no, yeah, there is the issue of restructuring. There is the issue of Fulani Headsman, oh, which yeah. has not been nipped in the board. There is mm -hmm. the issue of IPOP and asking for Biafra. There is the economy. There is corruption. There is a lot. Nigerians want strong leadership. We do not want whose sense of humor I have, really. Yeah, well, it also says to you what the All Progressive Congress um, governors uh, really have set out to measure. Uh, I will talk about it later, uh, well, on my own show, but I think what, what do we need to measure right now? Measurability, and I don't know if the word accountability is the word to use when it comes to this, but it tells you they traveled from all the way from Nigeria to London to measure its sense of humor. Best tax, summary I can tax give. Taxpayers money. And and that's why really I find it insulting, Femi, because it's taking Nigerians for granted. There is a limit to which you can push people. And what those people are doing is practically, forgive my French, shitting on the heads of Nigerians, yeah. over 180 million people. You're telling, you're giving them the middle finger, literally. Because you cannot explain, this does not happen in any other place. I don't know. Mm. Nigeria is just a unique place, really. And again, maybe the docility of citizens has a lot to do with this because you have people who are, are who we always leave everything to God, leave it to God. Oh, everything will be better. And we're not ready to ask questions. We're not ready to make demands. We're not ready to, you know, keep those people accountable. Well, hospitals in Nigeria are not functioning. And then this man, who is the president, is spending all of this money and he does not find it fit to address the nation. And they're going to measure sense of humor, really? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll see how that uh, ends up for every one of us. I just hope uh, it won't be too late to see how things go. Well, follow our Twitter handle uh, and get uh, a little bit of, um, well, our own version of how the story is. I like this new headline I just put up. Governors travel to measure at Embuari's sense of humor. I like the headline. That's how I put it. Uh, if they're uh, working in print. Let's move on to other stories now. All right. And yeah. uh, we also have this one, which uh, I just mentioned. Um, it's a report that's just streaming in, um, and this can be found on Premium Times. Mm. It says, many fear dead as multiple blasts hit Borno IDP Cup. So, suspected Boko Haram members carried out multiple attacks on two internally displaced persons um, at Cam's IDP in Medugri Borunu State. Now, three explosions occurred around the camps on Sunday night, with the fourth explosion taking place in the early hours of Monday. And officials say they counted at least four corpses, while at least three people were injured from the attacks. Now, the first suicide bombers uh, were said to have sneaked into the Delori camp late on Sunday to, deten to detonate his explosive. And uh, it was the first major so I carried out in an IDP camp within my degree. Sound, sound story, sound story. I, I remember. I mean, I remember when we talked about the accidental bombing that did occur, uh, and one would have to start to also think about if the Nigerian brothers are porous and the IDP camps. Uh, one of the reasons why you call it camp is it's marked in, out, left, right, up, down. Uh, and it is measured off uh, some other, it's leaveable, supposed leaveable, temporarily leaveable for people. But then when it's temporarily not protected, those moments where things uh, go out of place and it looks like, hey, somebody dropped the ball in terms of uh, protocol for the, the IDP camp people, it's really sad. This is not a story you start to think about. It's one thing to be displaced. There's another thing to run into refuge. There's another thing in the place of refuge for you to know that almost being on the run is almost equivalent to staying in one place and getting killed. And, and it, just, it just keeps you wondering, like, what is really the value of a Nigerian life? You know, um... IDP camps are supposed to be, like you said, some sort of refuge. Mm. You know, it's bad enough that these people have been displaced from their homes. But then, even this place they run to for soccer, at least in the interim, till they're able to access their homes, it's still not safe. Uh, not too long ago, early in the year, was it this year, if I'm not mistaken, the story of um, the military, uh, the Nigerian military mistakenly Rana. bombing, you know, an I I IDP camp, and it's just sad. <laughs> Um, and we've also had stories of money allocated or meant for IDP mm. camps used, you know, siphoned goods and food items meant for those people are cornered and sold back to them. And the level of I don't, callousness, 
really. This is not the Africa that we know. This is not the Nigeria that you know. You grew up hearing stories of people taking care of one another, irrespective of where they come from. And then you, you keep hearing the stories, and you also have a federal government who keeps insisting that they have successfully, you know, defeated Boko Haram. And uh, how can you really say Boko Haram has been defeated with all of the stories of bombs? And and you know, yes, I commend the work that. The, the Buhari led administration has done it used to be so much more worse than this i cannot mm. deny that but then the life of one nigerian is enough you know you shouldn't we shouldn't have to keep saying oh okay four people it used to be that uh, 200 people would die at once now it's only four it's only it's, it's no longer coordinated attacks it's only you know um separate incidents is one-offs but it isolated. shouldn't be so it should, yeah exactly that's the word isolated attacks and it should really not be so the life of what even one nigerian should count it should mm. count well it's a story that's uh, just going in they said the source of the attack was true suicide bombing uh in this latest and what we're following through breaking multiple suicide attacks killed four in idp camp that's how daily trust uh, shares the headline of that very story we'll, we'll see how things do follow through in that regard and it's just really really sad now, still with the news, um, the Nigerian army took out time this weekend to do some major reshuffling or announce the reshuffling that they had done. But the Nigerian army redeployed, cancelled or amended a uh, person of seven major generals, 45 um, brigade generals and 597 other officers last week in one of his far, in most far-reaching shake-up exercise in recent years. Well, no reason was readily cited for the new postings and cancellation and amendment of previous postings. But military sources uh, told Premium Times, who is reporting this over the weekend, uh, that the Chief of Army Staff, Tukubu Time, approved the exercise on the 18th of July. Among uh, the seven major generals affected, uh, it's includes the Army, the Army Council, the redeployment of Adeni Oyebade, two months after he was transferred from being general. Officer commanding of Nigerian uh, Army 1 Division, Kaduna to Army headquarters in Abuja, and as chief of logistics. Uh, but no new posting was assigned to Mr. Ibadi, who was indicted last year in December 2015 for the massacre of Shiite in Zaria. Well, the shakeup was announced in a memo with reference number MSGI 304-207 and uh, signed by I.O. Rabiu, a major general military secretary uh, in. Uh, the military were pretty much of this but uh, if one were to take a public interpretation of this one would say this is about the first major shakeup mm. after that alleged talk about oh maybe some politician was trying to get to weigh in and put in some money behind some military personnel in order for them to possibly think of a takeover something the likes of the US and the British eventually condemned and well, the, the the head of the military also had to reaffirm that he wasn't aware of any of such and was going to squash and investigate. And much of that investigation report, yes, is still internet, but we see the effect in the redeployment, I presume. 52 generals, 597 other officers redeployed in the Nigerian army. That's a story that's also making wave this morning. In Nigeria, Africa. Okay, Femi and there, there's this one that will interest everybody here, as well as everybody who is listening and everyone who is um, social media savvy and who enjoys um, doing some stuff on social media. Mm. And this one says that the Nigeria plans establishment of council to regulate social media use in the country. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I think we have to delve into the story to be sure. It's not something akin to social media bill mm. that Nigerians collectively raise their voices against and manage to get the National Assembly to pull the plug on that particular one. Now, the National Council on Information has recommended the setting up of a council to regulate the use of social media in Nigeria. Now, this is according to a story reported by Premium Times NG.com. The recommendation is contained in a communique issued at the end of extraordinary meeting of the National Council on Information on hate speeches, fake news and national unity, which held in just on Friday. Now, in the communique made available uh, to the public or to journalists, the council recommended the use of stri stringent measures in checking conventional media and their programs and also uh, noted that social media has no address as such. Vetting and editing posts in social media 
might be difficult. I, and I think one thing I find very interesting here is that um, um, it, they recommended that information managers at the state level should open a website to counter report of any misinformation posted by the social media as quickly as the hate speeches, misinformation and fake news are posted. Um, I, I wonder why it took, it took some sort of um, conference for them to know that this is the common sense thing to do because mm -hmm. we live in a country where it takes the government days and days and days after to respond to trending issues case in point has to be the story of you know the 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 sale of um the the presidential airplanes mm. sometime early last year where it took over two three days the news had been trending it trended at number one two days after for the federal government to repute you know that stories and several times stories come up and you know some sometimes even this media organizations um quote sources and the relevant authorities are very silent on it and they allow you know people knowing that we are in an information age social media age where things just go viral in split seconds and they are allow those things to really trend Why? for so long before they attempt to provide any sort of you know counter information or clarification on what the true situation is and i think that if that is what they want to do then fine but if they are trying to bring any form of regulation to use of social media as uh, as ha you know you find happening around some other african countries like ethiopia sometimes cameroon sometimes where they clamp down on social media use then nigerians are not going to have it if this is what they want to do good one long overdue really long overdue we'll see where that story leads us uh, and uh, whether uh, there'll be much uh, uh, decision be made or decision made differently in this regard. Well, there's been some measure of compliments for the vice uh, president, who's the active president in Nigeria for some time now. Uh, the story goes on to say, I mean, it's growing concerns over the capacity of the federal government to run the affairs of government. In view of the ailing president, Mohamed Dubari, indications have emerged that the cordial relationship between Buhari and his vice, Professor Yamil Shiva Jossan, have continued to work stronger, following the implicit confidence between the two. Well, this is as reported in Daily Times. Uh, one of the presidential aides also confided in Daily Times that the development has neutralized the claims of some soothsayers uh, who predicted problems for Nigeria over the running of the country without the president. Well, the presidential head who spoke in confidence that uh, because of the sensitivity of the matter also disclosed the loyalty of Oshibajo to Buhari saved the country from anarchy that would have ensued if the acting president had acted otherwise. He did also go on to say uh, when Buhari left Nigeria for the United Kingdom about 60 days ago to attend to his heel health. Uh, most Nigerians predicted a big vacuum in presidential freedom. While some were, were of the view that Shibajo lacked the political sagacity to carry out the, the affairs of the government, some claimed that a certain group of, ca of cabal had hijacked the Buhari led government. Uh, but contrary to all the insinuations, the presidential aide on Sunday revealed how Shibajo's absolute loyalty to Buhari has saved Nigeria from the economic crisis and political impasse. He also disclosed that contrary to certain misgivings in some quarters, over abundance. It stated that Shibanda usually consults with Buhari before making any appointment, insisted that mutual confidence between the two of them is solid. And, and then he went on and on to also talk about the fact that uh, Shibanda um, may have hesitated at this time to confirm uh, two ministers um, um, possibly being fielded before uh, as a replacement, that uh, he's hesitating on carrying that out. But that's some sorts um, on much of the Promance, that's presidential yeah, romance, romance. promance <laughs> uh, expected between the two yeah. um, two um, men in charge of Nigerian affairs. Femi, you cannot really deny that the Vice President, Yemi Osibanjo, has really done a good job of filling in for the President. Mm -hmm. He's also done a good job of, you know, maintaining his loyalty to the President at, at least publicly. every turn. Yeah, publicly as well, which is what Nigerians you know needed at the time and still needs now because you know i, I remember the the, the, the was, i think it was that 29th may or after for what this protest i can remember exactly okay. what it was but there was this massive protest that you know held was it ipop now and then he said he, he in his response he said we hear you 
you know, the yes. government. Oh, yes. We hear you. We, f we hear your... That was the two-faced uh, protest. Exactly. Thank you. You know, that two-faced that was, uh, you know, later uh, boycotted or, you know, put a stop to. It wasn't boycotted. It was put a stop to after two-faced reports came out that he had re received threats and all of that and all of that. But it was, uh, you know, that promise was going to be protest on the state of the nation. And he came up and he said, you know, that sentence, we hear you. And, you know, we are going to do all we can to, you know, and we're, this is what we're doing to address all of these issues. For me, that was the most epic moment of mm. his life as the vice president or and even the life of this entire administration. Being able to rein in, tensions were running high, Nigerians were angry, and, you know, people were feeling like they were not, they were not exactly benefiting, they were not enjoying, like we like to say in Nigeria, the dividends mm -hmm. of democracy. And in, in one sentence, it was able to calm a lot of nerves. I remember on Twitter, Twitter went haywire, like people were saying, this guy should be the president. You know, and it looked like they were, he was building into that whole Barack Obama thingy. Yep. You know, using words to reach out to people and to calm nerves and to sort of build bridges. And mm. he has done an amazing job. He has. Okay, so th this is the part where one would say, for the sake of Nigeria, can somebody uh, will have a meeting with possibly the president and the acting president and will resolve uh, who should... Um, Continue. I really think the focus needs to move away from uh, President Muhammad Buhari's health. Uh, uh, in other words, it should actually take a bow in public life and just uh, possibly subscribe to the idea of, oh, the active president knows uh, all the things we plan to achieve. Don't, don't, I mean, don't allow the president's diehard supporters to No, they, they may not like it, but that's the honest truth. Uh, we cannot be in that state of impasse. One of the things the active president cannot do, and I will tell you in all honesty, is this. He cannot call a meeting of the Council of States. Uh, he can't call, he, he doesn't, he can't do that because there can only be one, uh, like almost like a supreme leader, uh, what in Iran or Iraq they call the Ayatollah. Yeah? And there can only be one president at a time. So he can't even call, he doesn't have the measure of power, whether by paper or by any of the protocol, to call the Council of State. He cannot address a joint session of the National Assembly. Uh, he can't. That's the honest truth. He can't do that. At this point in time, maybe these are not things that are in public knowledge. There are things that are there. You are the acting president, but then there's a measure, there's a guided or guarded measure of what you can actually get to do uh, in this regard. We have pictures from Port Harcourt, by the way, for you. You may want to check it out. It's a serious flooding situation. And I, I'm hoping um, UK's village is not in this one. I'm an about girl. Oh, you're an about girl. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. not much of a problem for you, but. Uh, I think Aba has, we've always... Um, had flooding issues. Yeah, m mostly because of the state, bad state of the roads. So, um, so uh, rainy seasons, uh, the rainy season is usually a nightmare for mm. anybody who lives in Aba. Mm. Uh, you know, aside from the fact that the roads are not motorable, um, even the means of transportation as well, it's... Um, Taxis don't run as much in Aba, mm -hmm. so you only have the tricycles, which we call the Keke Marwa, which uh, again the state government, uh, you know, asks to stop running after 7 p.m. So mm -hmm. if you are outside of your house after 7 p.m. and do not have a car of your own, even those who have cars as well are not even you know able to drive them as such because of the state of the road. You mm -hmm. are just in hell because you would have to practically trek or more. So yeah. Okay. Now, the, we'll possibly we'll take uh, just a few more stories before we go to Africa, uh, essentially to cover. But here's one story that I am almost um, finding hard to read uh, because of the way it is uh, called. It says, um, dismissed, uh, this from Vanguard newspaper, by the way, dismissed Air Force officer among Boko Haram fighters in clash with police. Mm -hmm. This is what Vanguard newspaper is reporting. And they just put up this report about three hours ago saying dismissed um, Air Force officer among Boko Haram fighters in clash with police. This is not a nice development. Let me share with you a little bit of the details on this. Kano State Commissioner of Police, Rabi Yusuf, yesterday disclosed that one of the Boko Haram suspects who allegedly engaged the police in a gun battle in Kano was dismissed from the Nigerian Air Force. Yusuf said the dismissed officer escaped with gunshot wound from Gaia Unogo, a local government area clash. The police commissioner added that five suspects were later nabbed at a hideout where they were plotting an attack. They said one of the suspects uh, confessed to the police about the planned launch of a series of attacks 
on places of worship, public gatherings, and other strategic places of interest. Yusuf, uh, who is the commissioner, also did say uh, that the arrest followed an active intelligence indicating that remnants of the terrorist group who escaped from Sabisa Forest were regrouping in some states in the north, uh, including Canaan. The police board said the suspects arrested include Abba Mohammed of uh, Niger Republic, who's 20 years old, Osman Ebuari, who's 23 from Bonu State, Liasu Abdullahi, 46. Gazawa uh, of 46, um, and well, they were arrested in Gazawa local government area of Kanu State. Now, two heavily pregnant women were also arrested. Mm. Uh, Aisha Yahoo, 25, Ladi Di Yunusa, uh, 27, both of Juana Hudu quarters in Nasawa local government area of Kanu State. Uh, they had some ammunition, AK 47, numbered, and 49 live ammunition, four magazines, four pieces of IEDs, two sets of Air Force uniforms. Hmm. Um, others are four caps of army uniform, one hand smoke, one military boot, one set of camouflage Whoa, uniform, mm -hmm. one Vogue's uh, Vogue's uh, Virgin motor vehicle, key, one laptop, one iPad, some pictures of suspects in military uniform, and some operational black mask. That is quite a handful uh, of a story uh, to go by in this. It's, it's one of those stories I'm sure you get to read the full details even now as we put it up for a what one would call well a multi tweet. We think you need to read this full story in your time as quickly as you can. But this is one of the stories that uh, is getting rave review. We need to go on the break now. When we do come back after the break, let's take a look at some stories from across Africa. This is still morning Africa, and we are having a good time discussing some of the latest developments in Nigeria. And around Africa, it's Family Live alongside what at Prof UK. At Family Live is my Twitter. I'm doing at Prof UK is where you find uh, UK. And by the way, there's a cause very dear to our heart. We'll tell you much about it when we come back. We are almost there. If yeah. you add just a little bit of you into that process, stay with us. We'll be back on AmplifiedRadio.net after All now. Right. 